Hello out there in Nile Land. Today is a day of great joy. In Ritz Hashem today we are Messiah Triasar, finishing the final two completed Prakim of Malachi. Uh, today she was learned the Nishmas Rachel Leibas of Chaim Shalom. And uh, before we commence learning the second and third parak, I want to mention one pasuk at the end of Parak Aleph, which I don't think I mentioned last time, because uh, it's interesting. Pasuk Yud Gimel, it says, hinei, This is Parak Aleph, Pasuk Yud Gimel. It says, uh, Yud Gimel, we mentioned last time how this has to do with the Deen Mitzvah Vera, meaning, you say, Behold, this offering is so burdensome, and you vex him, and you say, God, Master of Legions, bring the stolen, the lame, the sick animal, and you bring it. So uh, the point is, is that throughout the world, the Navi is saying, God's name is known. He's famous throughout the world, and yet what happens over here? Uh, the Jewish people are reluctant to mention the name of God. Uh, the United States president is mentioned all the time. John McCain, his acceptance speech, mentioned God a million times. I can't say the same for uh, Obama, who mentioned only at the end the uh, prerequisite saying, God bless America. But McCain mentioned it time again and again and again and again. And it's very customary, customarily at inaugural addresses, uh, God had mentioned. And yet, and I'm not a... Uh, person who likes to bash, and yet Israeli presidents and prime ministers uh, almost break, break out in the hives if they have to mention the name of God. But Nabi says he's famous throughout the world, and yet you refuse to mention his name. These, this situation today comes right out of the Navi. We commence Perik Beis, the second Perik of Malachi. Uh, before we begin, although a person has a, uh, a good animal, People bring cripples and they say it's good enough and they write as a tax write-off. That is the background of his, the Navi's complaint, which brings us into the second parak. In the second parak in our chapter, the Navi speaks directly to the Kohanim and the Levim, and again they are held to a much higher standard and we expect more from them. The Bach that we say in Aftar is Habocher ben Nevi'im Tovim, that are very good prophets, meaning uh, the administrative assets are important, but far more important than being an administrative whiz is being a good person. The task of leadership is to be a good person, a person that we want to be proud of as our leader, a person who is not corrupt, who is not in the news for doing dishonest things, one we're proud of, one we look up to. But the leaders of God's people are held account- accountable to the very high standards. Begin, Perk base Pasakala. Va'ata lechem ha-mitzvah hazot he begins right away by saying, and now this commandment is upon you, the Kohanim. Pasuk base. Im lo sishmu v'im lo sasimu alev laseis kavod lishmi amar shem tzvakos shilati v'chem es hameira varosi es birchoseihem v'gamarosiha ki einchem samim alev. If you do not listen and do not take it to heart. To render honor to my name, says God, Hashem Tzvakot, I will send a curse among you and I will curse your blessings. I will curse your blessings. Indeed, I have already cursed it, for you did not take it to heart. Uh, so God is giving a warning and a, uh, a warning before this happens. So what will happen is, this is the opposite of what blessing will be, this will be the curse. You will be stricken. And I will curse you again, that the blessings which I've given you up to now will now turn into curses because of your abominable behavior. Pasuk Gimel, Hinini go'er lachem es hazera vezerisi feresh apnechem, peresh chagechem, nasa eschem elav. Wow, these are pretty... And terrible things. Uh, Behold, I am suppressing the seed because of you. I will scatter filth upon your faces, meaning literally the waste I will put on your faces. The filth of your festive offerings, your sin, will carry you to this. The Navi here is being extremely graphic. Describe what will happen if the highest standards are not observed. I, says God, I will get even with you. I will take the dung, the dung, and I will rub your noses in it. God will not tolerate corrupt leadership. And this will not be compromised because of the low current crop of candidates. You can't say, listen here, everybody's corrupt. There is no such thing as relative good. I expect 
proper behavior, uh, paragons of mankind and of character for the Jewish leaders. I think that's expectation from every person. Nevoa is never soothing, and certainly Malachi will not say good enough. No, no, that is not the way of Malachi. For the high standard cannot be compromised. And Navi says, I expect from you greatness, and if you will not deliver, then I will arrange circumstances which will be consequential to your inappropriate behavior. Malachi describes the ideal Jewish leadership and he gives good advice to those who would aspire to such a role. Fundamentally, what is the advice of Malachi to a Jewish leader? And I mean, if you're familiar with current events of today, they weren't listening to Malachi, that's for sure. Fundamentally, the advice is no, not to make the leader into an infallible God, not to demand honor and service from other Jews, and this is described best as what Beryl 